On today's show, from the hit NBC series, California Dreams, as well as Baywatch, please welcome Kelly Packard. Hi, thanks for having me. This is really fun. Hey everybody, welcome to the Mike Grant Show. And today's special guest is from the hit NBC series, California Dreams, as well as Baywatch. Please welcome Kelly Packard. Hey Kelly, how are you? Good, good to see you again. You too. I'm so excited to have you here. We're gonna have a great time, everybody. We're gonna stroll right down memory lane. But you know, we can't start the show, Kelly, without taking it back to the beginning. And okay. that brings us to the very first question that, unfortunately, I got asked this question all the time. I feel like a broken record, but how did you get started in acting? <laughs> so I was always a ham as a kid. I was constantly performing and everyone around me kept saying, you need to put her in the business. I was not afraid of anything, anybody. And my mom waited and didn't just put me in the business because everybody else said that, that she should. She waited until I came to her when I was about seven and said, mom, I want to be an actress. And so she he took me seriously and she got me a manager and an agent. Well, my manager got me an agent. And when I was eight, I probably had one of my most successful years to date at eight years old. I did like nine national commercials in one year. I thought I was so cool. And then from there, from like nine to 12, I auditioned sometimes over 300 auditions in one year and didn't book a thing. So I learned early on about how the business can be very picky, cruel, all of the above. <laughs> so, but I stuck with it. And then things started happening in the guest spot world with Wonder Years and Baywatch and Blossom and shows like that. Yep. And that's true. You just got to stick with it. I mean, you can't give up. You've got to be determined. There's, you're going to hear a million no's before you get that one yes. Absolutely. And my mom made that a big point. She's like, Kelly, you got me into this. You are sticking it out. Yep. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about those earlier roles. Let's start off with the Wonder Years. So Wonder Years was my big first, my first big guest spot. And at the time, it was my favorite show. It was a very popular show. So to get that spot was huge. It would be like being on Yellowstone now, my favorite show, right? Um, and so I did that and I got it because I guess I did a really natural, good Southern accent. I played Susan Fisher and she had a Southern accent and I guess I just had a natural accent. Um, but yeah, so I did that when I was 13, I believe. And from there, because I had Wonder Years on my resume and it was such a big show, things just started opening up and I started getting more guest spots. Um, one of them being on Baywatch, ironically. Yep. And then you were on Baywatch, which, you know, it led to a permanent gig. So tell us how being a guest star on there eventually led you to permanently being a cast member. So I think, I think it had a lot to do with they, when they like someone they were very loyal and so I did the original guest spot when I was 14 years old and then I did two more guest spots over the next three four years because they liked me and they kept bringing me back as different characters so the trivia is true I was four different characters on the show Baywatch which is pretty funny um but so anyways I went I think my third guest spot I had already booked California Dreams but I did do a guest spot on Baywatch and they had reached out to me Baywatch did when Nicole Eggert left the show her character Summer they wanted me to come on and be Summer and I couldn't because I was in a contract with NBC for California Dreams and they say that they held on to that role until I was available and offered it to me as literally five months after I finished filming California Dreams and it was I was April not summer at this point they had changed the character name but it was the same concept and what was it like working on Baywatch uh, was it 
fun outside all day long or was it a lot of hard work on that set? You know, it was hard work. I know it doesn't, it's hard to believe, <laughs> but it was um, for me a dream job because I'm born and raised Southern California. If I wasn't working, I would have been at the beach every day in the summer anyway. So I was being paid to be on the beach. So hindsight, it was the best job I'll ever have. Now, there were days where, you know, I was in the water in November and it was probably 40 degrees and those days were not fun. There was, it was anything but fun. I remember calling Darren on my way home from work and saying, can you please start a hot bath? I can't feel anything. Um, you know, little things like that. And it was, it was being in the sun all day is, is tiring and it's, it takes its toll, but looking back, it was just the greatest job because I loved being on the beach. Yeah, that seemed like an awesome show to be on, especially you're on the beach all day. I mean, who can argue with that? Yeah. And what is your favorite memory of working with the cast and David Hasselhoff? <laughs> I have a lot of good memories um, over the years, having been on it so many times. But David Hasselhoff was always so good to me and so welcoming. And we were instant friends. And he is just, I, I call him my hero because he is in a lot of ways. He's such a big name and everybody knows him but he's so generous and so kind with his time and his his efforts and I just want to be like that someday you know I just want to be just like him um everybody else was really kind I made some wonderful friends from Baywatch that I still talk to pretty often actually there's a group of us that kind of reconnected gosh it's been oh my gosh it's been I'm going to age myself like 18 years since we reconnected um, but we thought about doing a project together there was about seven of us and so we talked a lot through all of that and I still have you know uh, relationships with a lot of them and and see them and see their families and stuff so it's nice I lucked out having that being your second hit series to have you know really been on a starring role in what would you say would have been the big differences between the two series what, like, what did you learn from Baywatch that you took away from it? Um, what did I learn from Bay? So the d main difference, I think, between the two, um, I, I didn't realize right away the popularity of Baywatch. At the time that I joined it, it was in its height. And it was in a, I had one billion viewers a week. I don't know that any show has ever really topped that. It has broken world records, you know? And so I didn't know until I was on set and really took it in what that meant. Um, you know, California Dreams taught me everything because I was still, I was 17 when I started that show. I was still in high school. I was, the friends that I made from California Dreams are my family because we were family. And so going on from Dreams to Baywatch, it was, I was very lucky that it was close together. I didn't have a big gap in between. Um, but the difference between the two, a world level was huge. <gasps> And how did you get cast on California Dreams? So California Dreams, I, let's see. Um, I was submitted for the character Tiffany and that was one of nine auditions I ended up having. Four of the nine auditions were in the music studio. So this character, Tiffany, they wanted her to be able to sing as well as act. So I first audition I must have done well because I got a call back and then from there I went to the music studio auditions and I had to prove myself vocally so that was unique um I do remember going to one of the big vocal auditions and I had a uh, strep throat and I could barely sing and I had to sing through that and I was like well I just blew that they're gonna hate me <laughs> And so anyway I move on and they they keep seeing me I go to network and um I ended up getting it. And I think later down the road, I told him about my strep throat incident. And Peter Ingle was like, well, we were going to hire you anyway, even though you couldn't sing. And then they, they were pleasantly surprised that I could actually sing. <laughs> so did you have any vocal lessons growing up or were you a singer or was this just, you know, spur of the moment for you? I sang, but I never really had any lessons. I have never to this day really had any lessons. I just enjoyed Enjoy singing. I come from a family of singers. My mom was a singer. My grandma enjoyed singing. And I just, um, my earliest days of singing go back to when I was in pageants when I was 12, you know, and that was my talent. Um, 
I also was in choir in school, but no, no formal training. It was just, I really lucked out. And on the show, you sang many different songs. So I want to ask you, what was your favorite song to sing on the show? My favorite song of mine to sing was probably um, your little the little girl song. You know, always be the little girl, that one. But my favorite song that I was not mine that I liked to sing were all of Heidi's songs. <laughs> Her songs were my favorite. Um, castles on quicksand and you know this time the I wanted to be her I wanted to sing her songs <laughs> and I did see I forget the name of the artist I don't know if you know or not I did see that they posted somebody just remade that song castles on quicksand I just was made known of that and I am like that's incredible yep. perfect for our 30 year reunion they've said it they can't believe that they got the rights to it I was kind of shocked too um but that's wonderful and how fun for that song to come around again all these years later all of that music was music that we could listen to now it does it's it hasn't it, it could be on the radio now so I'm kind of surprised that they're the first ones covering it but I'm glad that they are <laughs> and California Dreams was so big at the time that you guys even had a soundtrack which was cool. And I want to know if, um, you know, did you get that soundtrack? Because <laughs> <And, laughs> it was on CD and cassette. I, I got to look for it and see if I can find it. Yes, I did. I have both the CD and the cassette. And that for me was the highlight the whole show because getting a contract with NBC was amazing. But then getting a contract with MCA Records at the same time was like, for a 17 year old girl, it was really hard to understand, to comprehend how cool that was. And we did, we have for this, to this day, we have an album out there. It's hard to find, so I'm warning you, <laughs> but it's awesome. And I do pop it in every once in a while. And I love that my kids love it and listen to it. Yeah, and that theme song, I love the theme song. So I, I wanna ask you a little bit about the recording of the theme song, if you have any memories of recording it and what it was like to perform that song. Cause that, that's one of the best theme songs out there. Uh, it was so fun. I, I, you know what, the memories that I have of it are not as much in the music studio, which is, I, which is unfortunate, but I remember shooting the music video because back in the day, music videos were everything. And we had a full on budget for music video for three songs, This Time, California Dreams, and Rain. And our music videos are pretty awesome, and which actually they used a lot of the footage in season one openers from our music video. But I have video, I have memories of that. And so every time we're, <laughs> my kids hate me, my husband hates me, but every time we're on the five freeway going down to LA, there's a building that you pass. And every time I say, that's where we filmed California Dreams, the music video, I point to it and they're like, oh, it's again, mom. But those are the memories that I have. And then same thing, we went to Venice Beach probably about a year ago. And I was showing my girls right where we shot a lot of that particular video. And they were just like, wow. <laughs> yep. And before I forget too, I am wearing, if we can see here, California yeah. Dreams t-shirt, everybody. So I love <laughs> now I want to ask you about the cast because there were so many great people on this cast. I want to run through everybody and get any special memory you have of them. Um, the first one, let's start all the way in the beginning because in the beginning of the show, you know, the show came out, you guys, it kind of was more of a family show in the beginning, mm -hmm. centered around a family, the Garrison family. Yes. And there was Matt and Jenny, and then they had their parents and their little brother in there too. So mm -hmm. Matt was played by Brent Gore. So can you tell me your memories of Brent? I can. So Brent, I had an immediate connection and a crush on Brent. Uh, he was the older guy that just, because I was 17, he was probably three years older than me, so I was like, oh, um, but we hit it off right away, and he became like a big brother to me, and, and really still is. Um, we aren't as close as I am with some of the other cast members, but really for no other reason than he moved away. He moved um, to Tennessee shortly after uh, filming, and so it was harder to keep in touch with him and do things with him, but he's got a show that he's doing here in LA on October 7th, and I'm going to go see it. Awesome. And then his sister, Jenny, was played by Heidi Noel Lenhart. So tell me your memories of her. 
So Heidi and I became best friends immediately, and we are still very, very close. Um, her leaving was one of the hardest things that, that happened on that show because we were so close. And I adore her. I love her. Uh, I'm close with her, her family. I, you know, I just, I'm so grateful that we still keep in touch. And we have that friendship where we can go almost a whole year without talking and just pick up where we left off. Yes. And those are the best kind of friendships. Don't you love that when you don't see somebody for a real, not, obviously we do want to see them, but right, you don't course. see them for a really long time and you pick up like nothing has happened. Of course. That's those, my favorite. Those are the best kind of friends. Yep. Favorite friendships. Yep. Tony Wicks, who is played by William James Jones. <laughs> so William and I, we were the babies of the bunch and we were the only ones that had to do school still when we started the show. So he, I got very close very quick because we were in a classroom together when we weren't filming. <laughs> and William is the biggest bundle of energy you have ever met. And it just, it, it, it bounces onto you. And so he and I together in class, we were not very good students, um, but we had fun. We had so much fun. We are still very close as well. And I'm so insanely proud of him because he left the business despite how talented he was. And he is now a doctor. I mean, I'm just so proud of him. I, I could shout it from the rooftops. The great Sly Winkle, played by My Michael Cade, who you had a little surfer, surfer soul swapping ceremony episode <laughs> with as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. So um, Michael and I were probably the slowest to hit it off because he came on and was very, um, very New York very abrasive and I just being from California didn't understand that personality and he had he was constantly joking especially at the expense of us girls he was saying that we you know had big butts or this or that and you know making me cry this was what Michael would do he would make me cry um, but now having said that he is the one that I'm closest to and he became like a second father to my children because my husband was in residency and working crazy hours I would fly to LA and he would help me take care of my kids um he's just he's my closest friend of the show of the boys especially and it's it's I wouldn't change it for anything and we can laugh about those days when he made me cry um but he's still the same old Michael and I'm super proud of him too he just had his first baby which blows my mind and because you were there all five years you did get to work with the Garrison family you, you met Richard, Melody, and Dennis, who are played by Michael Cutt, Gail Ramsey, and Ryan O'Neill. So what are your memories of them? I don't have as many um, recollections, except that Dennis was young and fun, and we had to keep him wrangled in. Um, Michael was just the, the, the father to everyone. Amazing. And Gail was always so kind. I have not, unfortunately, kept in touch with really any of them. Uh, I would love to know where they are, how they're doing, um, and send them my wishes. But I certainly lost touch with them over the years. Now, here's a little bit of trivia. I'm going to see if you actually know the answer to this. But in California Dreams, you guys, you know, you practiced in the first two seasons in the Garrison garage. Do you happen to remember the address of the Garrison household? No. No. <laughs> I, no, I would not even begin to even guess. 128 Ocean Drive. How funny. Was it in an episode? Did we verbally say it? Yep. It was, I believe it was the pilot episode, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I oh, was watching an episode the other night and I had seen it in there. So I said, I, I want to see, I was like, it's, I know it's a tough question, but let's see. Yeah. And actually, you know what? One more tough question. Let's see. Do you remember how much money you guys won or how much money you guys got for your first California Dreams paid gig? I want to say it was a thousand dollars. No, it was two fifty, and it was to perform at let's see, Randy Joe's party. Randy Joe's party, yeah. I thought it was more than that. I might be confusing another episode where we were going to make a thousand dollars. Yeah, but two fifty—that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, and and I think it was like five of you at that point anyway, so it was like about fifty dollars a piece is what it would yeah. have been. <laughs> And then later on, a couple people left the cast and you had some new additions. So the first new addition that you had was Jake Summers, 
who later went on to play your boyfriend in the show, but played by Jay Anthony Frankie. So what are your memories of him? So Jay and I, because they put us together pretty quickly, we um, we had a love-hate relationship because, again, I was like 18. <laughs> and so I was um, trying to, you know, be professional, but on the same token, I'm like, I have to make out with you, you know? So it was, we had a, we... We had a very loving and supportive relationship of one another, but it was a lot of immaturity sprinkled in. And so now, now I look back and I have nothing but respect and admiration for him. And I love that we're still the token couple from the show and, you know, Jake and Tiffany forever. Um, I'm glad that it was him that I got to play opposite for that, for that long. Samantha Wu played by Jenny Kwan. So I thank God every day for Jenny. Uh, she came in when Heidi left and I didn't think that I was, my heart was going to mend, but she and I were friends actually before she came on. Um, there's a funny story. It's definitely out there, but Jenny and myself and our friend Allie were all up against each other for the part of Tiffany. We went to network and we all looked at each other at one point and said, uh, obviously one of us gets it. They went for a look because you had me, you had Jenny, was Pina and Allie was, um, uh, she was Hispanic. And I'm like, clearly they're going for a look. So I, I got it. Luckily they were going for the blonde surfer. And, uh, but that night Jenny called me to congratulate me. And I knew in that moment that we would be friends forever. I did not know that she would come on the show a year later and that we would be to this day, the best of friends. Then you also had Mark Winkle, Sly's cousin played by Aaron Jackson. Yes. Um, Aaron came in. So both I'm going to lump Aaron and Diana together because they came in in a really tough um, spot. And I say that now with maturity because they came in and you already had all of us that were like this. And they came in and they had to try to fit in with a group that had been together for three years. And that must have been very hard for them. And we were not always kind about it being the rest of us that were, had been together from the, its conception. Having said that, Aaron has, he's a light and I love him. Uh, Diana was always wonderful and we got along great. I haven't seen or heard from Diana since the show wrapped and I would love more than anything to say hi to her and see how she's doing. Um, luckily, I've been connected with Aaron through different functions. But so I've talked to everyone and kept close with everyone except for Diana and then of course the parents and Dennis. And what was your favorite episode on the show? Now I have a favorite that involves you, but I wanna see if you say the same one. <laughs> if, if, if we're gonna pick the same, are we thinking the same here? I liked, obviously I liked Tiff's Gold because it was, it was, you know, really, probably the best storyline of the show when I was on steroids. But I, I think Indecent Promposal was one of my favorites. For obvious reasons, it, it was around me and Jake and then you know getting asked by someone else to go to prom and all that. But then the backstory with the boys doing their ballet stuff, it was so funny that I, I remember dying laughing watching their stuff. Yes, I was gonna say um, definitely those episodes, the steroid one, I was gonna say, did you get your inspiration from Jesse Spano and the caffeine pills for that episode? You know what? I I don't think I saw her episode until after I filmed Tiffany's Gold. So I can't say that I did get it from that. But it, there was a, obviously a lot of comparisons and a lot of uh, similarities. And I'm just glad that they gave that storyline to me. I thought that was really fun. Yes, and I think it's great too how back then they did have those episodes where, you know, it was educational. And I think even though there's a way you can still do that now and still yeah. keep it hip, keep it relevant, keep it modern, you know, yeah. those are the kind of things like, you know, they don't talk about that kind of stuff anymore, which is a shame because I'd like to see that in episodes nowadays, certain situations like that. Yeah, totally. And then eventually California dreams, you had to film the final episode. Tell me how hard that was for you. We were crying at the table read before the week even started because we knew what the week was going to be like. 
And what I love about that episode is you can watch it today and see the final song where me and Jenny cannot contain our emotion. And we are sobbing to the point where I'm looking away from the camera. She's looking away from the camera and our faces just say it all. And I love that they kept that in there because I don't, well, to be honest, I don't think we got a single take where we weren't crying, <laughs> but they kept it in there. So a true fan of the show can watch it and feel what we were feeling in that moment. And I watch it and I cry every time. And then after California Dreams ended, you did get some guest spots on other shows and even while it was on the air too. There's a couple um, different shows I want to ask you about. And the first one, because these are very popular hit series from back in the day from the TGIF lineup. So okay. Boy Meets World and Step by Step, I want to know about how your experiences were like and what did you do on them? Yeah, so um, Step by Step was... Was it during dreams or right before? But Step by Step was really fun because, um, again, I loved that show. But Boy Meets World was another really fun experience because I obviously did really well because they had me back as three different characters on Boy Meets World. Um, so I got pretty close with those cast members and um, – it was, I actually looked forward to it like every year. I'm like, so what am I doing this year? You know, I kind of just kept anticipating going back. <laughs> and they were always really good to me as well. I like to believe that if I wasn't on Dreams, I probably would have been able to be on that, you know? And then another show you were also on was USA High. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one was probably because it was a Peter Ingle show. It was probably one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but I recently saw Josh mm -hmm. Holland. Um, when was that? It was at Williams opening. So maybe a year and a half ago. And that, that was really fun getting to see him. And then I do still talk to um, Elaine, Elena uh, every once in a while, too, on Instagram from that show. And then after California Dreams, we mentioned how you went to Baywatch. And then a few years later down the road, you also hosted Ripley's Believe It or Not. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it was it was a really awesome gig for me because the business at the time was it was really becoming more about reality television and getting shows was harder and auditions for shows. So luckily I was able to naturally naturally I guess be believed as a host and so Ripley's was my first thing that I auditioned for and I have a really great memory of getting that show because it was Dean Kane that told me that I got it and I was like what <laughs> and then I got to do all the fun stuff I got to be on the road and interview these fun people uh, on the road and so I got to do all the good good fun stuff for two years and then you did have a very big fan of California Dreams that went on to host a talk show, besides this one, of course. And that would be Jimmy Fallon, who I also was actually in a commercial with on the MTV Video Music Awards. I think it was 2002 or 2000, 2005, I believe it was. Um, yes. So we have that Jimmy Fallon connection. So I want to know what it was like going back and being on the Jimmy Fallon show. Now, Jimmy is watching. He may not be watching today, but I am sure Jimmy will be watching this interview. <laughs> so Jimmy, when that all happened, I, I thought it was a joke. I'm not going to lie. I was like, Jimmy Fallon is a fan of the show. What's happening? And so I had just had a baby. They called me and said, we need you to get, get you back to New York in a week. I had a baby two months prior. I was like, so luckily I you know pulled it together I found a decent outfit I flew back there I had my nanny come on set with me um but it's still surreal to me that we got to be on Jimmy Fallon and that he's an actual genuine fan now I did hear that he tried to get um Saved by the Bell which was his favorite show and he couldn't pull that off so we were kind of his second choice but nonetheless the fact that he knew who we were that he loved our show was like oh <laughs> highlight of my career <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell everybody what have you been up to uh since your acting days what are you up to now so when I got pregnant with my 18 year old daughter uh, back when I was on Ripley's I kind of made a conscious decision to take a little break 
I did not think that it would last 18 years, this break. However, I'm grateful that I've had every minute with my kids that I've had. Um, I have taken a few projects, ones that really keep me close to home. I've done three Lifetime movies because they're filmed right here. They're very quick, like 10 days, I can bust it out. Um, I did a couple um, documentary type films that just spoke to me. I've done, um, well, back when I first had Aubrey, I was trying to do some stuff in New York, which was really fun. And one of those was a pilot for a talk show that starred um, Jennifer um, Lopez, which was really cool. So that's, I wish that would have gone, but it, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, so I've been doing things here and there, but for the most part, I've just been taking a break from being a mom. And having said that, I don't think that I'm done. I don't, I feel like my best work is yet to come. And I'm feeling more of that pull every day to get back into the business and really hit it hard. Um, so stay tuned. I don't, I don't know what that means. I just don't know that I'm done. Yep, and we want to see you out there. And a place that I want to see you out, which hopefully California Dreams gets to go, is there's, I don't know if you've heard of it, 90s Con? Because I yes. attended that. So I hope we can get the California Dreams there next year, because that would be awesome. I would, I would think, again, we were talking about this earlier, why the show isn't on the Peacock channel. I, that seems to me like a no-brainer, you know, to be at a 90s Con. <laughs> we were pretty pretty big staple for the 90s. I think that should be able to happen. And I would love to be able to get most of us together again um, in one room. That would be amazing. Okay, and now it's time for the lightning round where I'm gonna ask you a couple things and you just tell me which one you prefer. So Tetris or Super Mario Brothers? Oh, that's hard because we played so much of both Tetris. Would you rather travel on a plane, train, or automobile? Plane. Macarena or Mambo number five? Macarena. Would you rather say it with words or say it with emojis? Emojis. Which do you prefer? Save by the bell, save by the bell the new class, or save by the bell the college years? <laughs> save by the bell OG. <laughs> Listen to your heart or listen to your mind? Mm. I want to listen to my heart. Scream or I know what you did last summer? Mm. I know what you did last summer. Would you rather visit a zoo or an aquarium? Oh, I'm going to say aquarium. That Surf was tough. Surfing or volleyball? Oh, Volleyball, even though I'm terrible. <laughs> and would Tiffany say volleyball or surfing? <laughs> oh, she'd say surfing. <laughs> favorite Girl Scout cookies, Samoa or Thin Mints? Samoa, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> Wait, which one's your favorite? The Tagalong. Yes, that's the best. <laughs> that is. Backstreet Boys or In Sync? In Sync. Go, Joey. <laughs> and who's your favorite Spice Girl? Scary baby ginger or posh? Isn't there a sporty? Oh, did I not say sporty? Oh my god! Yeah, Scary so... baby ginger posh and posh and sporty. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so having said that, um, I'm gonna go with. Oh gosh, that's hard. Probably posh. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And what would you like to say to all the fans who are watching today? So I feel really overwhelmed when I think about how my fans have really been with me for a long time, <laughs> over 30 years. And I'm so grateful for all of their support. And I feel it. I, I'm newer to the social media world and I only have Instagram, but I, I feel it and I hear you and I just really appreciate you and your loyalty and how you've always been good to me. Never any negativity on there. And that means the world to me. Awesome. And how can they follow you on Instagram? What's your screen handle? So it's Kelly Packard Official. I'm still trying to get that crazy blue check, which I did not know was so difficult to get. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you again for joining us here today. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.